When the incident at Chernobyl happened, most people didn't realize how much of an effect it would have. It was like one of the things that people overlooked. But then, years later, it's put most of the people in the city in some sort of predicament. In fact, some of the things that happened are so scary that they feature on our 15 weirdest things ever found in Chernobyl. Pripyat Prison So let's take a tour of Chernobyl or what's known as the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. This is a 1,000 square kilometer area that the Soviet Union and later Ukraine declared uninhabitable. This is an area the size of Dallas, which has been closed off for over three decades. Most of this area is in the city of Pripyat, a city built to house everyone who worked on this nuclear plant. We'll first be looking at the prison and police station. The city was full of nuclear scientists who led a comfortable life, so there was little crime committed in this communist utopia. Nonetheless, there were still crimes such as theft and occasional fighting like every other town. During the accident, the police had an incredibly tough time deciding what to do. The evacuation was only supposed to be temporary and police had to patrol the city. Police were called to put checkpoints in place and prevent people from going near the nuclear power plant. Days later, with the whole city evacuated, the police were completely in control of the city. Offices, shops, homes, and everything else were now in their hands. The police simply carried on as normal and a day after the explosion, someone was even arrested for looting. What's left of this station are a lot of dark corridors, with various bits and pieces left from what once was a functioning police station. At the back is the detention center where they held prisoners. The station ran for another five years after the incident until it was eventually conceived that the city of Pripyat would never go back to normal. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. If you've read about Chernobyl, then you'd understand the havoc that was wreaked on this city and the people who lived there. For some of the people who were directly affected by the incident, it was something that they never will forget. From stillbirths to weird mutations that saw people losing their minds and even themselves in the process. But what could have caused such a thing? And do you guys even know that some of the aftermaths of the Chernobyl incident are still prevalent in the area today? For instance, what scientists discovered in the Chernobyl forest shocked the whole world, and they're still trying to make sense of it. Based on the image, we see someone who was mutated and has some sort of creepy and scary protrusion that makes it seem like they're in pain. What could have really gone wrong? Would we still classify this person as human? Are they even aware of this going on in the world? Well, we can't say, but we hope that they're fine. So what do you guys think? Do you believe that this is real? Or do you feel like it's actually not the effect of Chernobyl? Let's hear your opinion on the issue, and you can do that in the comment section using hashtag sweet topic. Forgotten Church this next stop on our tour is one of many churches in the city of Pripyat. The Soviet Union was very much against religion and closed churches from all faiths across the country. Churches were destroyed during the world wars, during forest fires, but sometimes the government even destroyed some of its own churches. Two churches were left in this area, one of which is in the Vili of Krest. The Soviet Union even tried to destroy this church, but it was defended by its inhabitants. However, the church remained closed during the Soviet reign. Today, it's almost in pristine condition, which is incredibly impressive given it was built in 1800. There are murals, crosses, and even letters from visitors to the church before the event. German Chernobyl explorer Andre Freisen was lucky enough to visit the site and told the Scottish Sun it was amazing to see a holy house in such a decaying zone in a condition like this. The atmosphere in there was incredible after seeing all the rundown houses in the city of Pripyat. It's a drastic contrast to most buildings in the exclusion zone which is still not prohibited to be lived in by humans. Occasionally, priests even visit this abandoned church to perform rituals. Stalker Apartment Next up, we'll be looking at a relatively new phenomenon in the area. Since the event happened in 1986, anyone under 35 was not alive to witness the event and never even lived in the Soviet Union. So for them, Chernobyl is almost like time traveling to the past. Before the war in Ukraine, you could visit the site, but only when you were accompanied by official guides. So a lot of Ukrainians have been fascinated by this ghost town and often visit, despite it being illegal and dangerous. Tourists visiting the area would be exposed to the same level of radiation you would receive from a dental x-ray, but without their supervision, it could be a lot worse. According to the Slate, 
These people are called post-apocalyptic romantics and are like trauma victims returning to the scene of the incident, they come here for reasons they can't fully explain. Slate followed one of these post-apocalyptic romantics. One carried a dosimeter with him so he can measure the amount of radiation he's exposed to. He travels at night, hops over fences, and turns off his dosimeter temporarily so it doesn't alert anyone. Eventually, he brings the Slate journalist to an abandoned building, where there are three other men waiting for him, who have also snuck inside. This is their meeting point. What was someone's home in the 1980s is now a hideout for thrill-seekers. <laughs> abandoned School We're now going to look at Pripyat's second school number three. The Soviet Union didn't put much thought into its school names, and as we mentioned earlier, they wanted to eliminate religion, so there wasn't any schools named after saints like in the West. The abandoned school is particularly fascinating, as it shows how Soviet propaganda was used on kids at an early age. A poster of Vladimir Lenin appears on the wall. He was a hero of communist Russia, and the nuclear power plant was even named after him. There's also military educational posters. There's also a picture of the city depicting what life was like before the disaster. When the incident happened, the school simply closed the windows and gave the kids iodine tablets. The school day went on as normal, but soon they realized how bad things were and they were allowed to go home early. When evacuations began, it was simply too dangerous to bring anything with you. Everything and anything could potentially be radioactive, so this is why so much has been left behind. This school is incredibly fascinating, and we'll be talking about a particularly strange room in this school later on in this video, which we promise won't disappoint. <laughs> Pawlowski's Horse but first, here's something that might change your perception about Chernobyl. If you asked someone about Chernobyl, you can almost guarantee that they'd not associate it with being a wildlife sanctuary. But in a strange twist of fate, this nuclear wasteland has become a popular breeding ground for Pawlowski's horse. When Chernobyl was evacuated, people believed that it would be uninhabitable for another 20,000 years. But three decades later, there's actually quite a diverse animal community living there. Pawlowski's horses are a key example. These are wild horses that are usually found in deserts, and Chernobyl, in a sense, is now a desert. These horses were normally found in Europe and Asia, but were going into a decline because of the overgrazing of land and hunting. Then, in 1998, these horses were reintroduced into the Chernobyl exclusion zone and have thrived ever since. The horses are also introducing biodiversity to the region and are indirectly restoring the area to its natural beauty. These horses serve as a real lesson for humans. Chernobyl has become almost a wildlife sanctuary, mainly because of the absence of humans. These animals were going extinct around humans, but when living in a nuclear wasteland are doing just fine. For some animals, humans are worse than radiation. Duga Radar The Duga Radar is sometimes referred to as the Russian woodpecker. From 1976 up until the explosion, a strange tapping noise could be heard across the world. It can be heard by both commercial and amateur radio operators. Nobody knew about the origins of this strange sound until after the fall of the Soviet Union. The sound of this woodpecker noise was the Duga radar, a missile detecting system. In the 1980s, the Soviet Union and the United States were constantly threatening to go to war with one another. Both were developing nuclear missiles, and there was a deadly game of chess going on between both sides. This antenna was 700 meters long and 150 meters high. The USSR built two of these, one on the eastern side of Siberia called Duga-2, and another its western side in Chernobyl called Duga-1. Duga-1 was pointed towards the United States, while Duga-2 was pointed towards China and Japan. This antenna could detect missiles from 1,600 miles away and would give them two or three minutes to prepare and evacuate. The sound from the transmitter was so loud that it could be heard across the world and even interrupted radar systems for shipping and aviation. When other countries complained, the USSR simply denied its existence. The director of the Chernobyl tour told CNN, tourists are overwhelmed by the enormous size of the installation and its aesthetic, high-tech beauty. No one expects that it's this big. Sadly, a lot of information about the Duga-1 is unavailable. CNN believes that vital components were transported to Moscow or taken away by looters. Also, any documents about this top-secret object would also be in Moscow rather than in Ukraine. Because the locals weren't even told what it was, a lot of conspiracy theories went around. Some thought it was mind control technology, others thought it was using this to control the weather. 
Mutant fish. The fact that Chernobyl is largely closed off has led to a lot of myths and misinformation about the place. Animals at Chernobyl were obviously affected by the explosion. But on some occasions, some associate anything strange at the site to be associated with radiation. In 2016, footage emerged of huge catfish in the waters. Jeremy Wade, a documentary maker, had an episode dedicated to river monsters where he caught a giant catfish. Lots of people thought they were mutant catfish because of this, but this turned out not to be true. Very, very few mutations lead to extra large size, said University of South Carolina radiation specialist Dr. Timothy Masso to Earth Touch News Network. Instead, they grow less efficiently, they're less capable of catching food, and they tend to not live as long. So our perception of radiation exposed to animals has been largely formed by science fiction and superhero movies. We expect to see animals with extra limbs or abnormal sizes. In reality, they just struggle to grow in these conditions and don't live as long. And as we explained earlier, the absence of humans in this zone arguably makes life easier for them. <laughs> Abandoned Pioneer Camp Our next stop takes us out to the countryside. During the Soviet Union, there were things called pioneer camps. By 1973, approximately 40,000 young pioneer camps existed in the USSR. They were recreational facilities for adults and children and had a swimming pool, basketball courts, saunas, and all sorts of amenities. This camp was called Fairy Tale and now ironically sits in a nuclear wasteland. It's located near a pine forest by the Utz River. Strangely enough, the facility was also a place to retreat to in case of an emergency. So years after the explosion, workers and engineers lived here while trying to restore the plant. Known as the liquidators, they were civil and military personnel who risked their lives to limit the immediate and long-term effects of the disaster. <laughs> Creepy Nursery There were 15 nurseries in the state of Pripyat. Every nursery was named after Soviet cartoons or characters from them. For example, one is named after the Golden Key, a Soviet fairy tale where a Pinocchio-like puppet frees the other puppets from their capitalist puppet master. But a nursery after a nuclear disaster is particularly creepy. You've got the innocence of childhood meshed up with the horror of what happened. There's tiny shoes, toys, little beds and books featured all across the nursery. But creepiest of all, are the dolls. They're toy dolls lying around with vacant eyes and looks like something out of a horror movie. There were also Soviet propaganda depicting the happy communist life, which today looks particularly bleak. The Control Room Believe it or not, the actual control room where the explosion has happened was open to tourists, but the reactor is still highly reactive and visitors need to wear protective gear upon entering. When visiting this site, you need to don a protective suit a helmet and a mask, and you can stay for five minutes, but that's it. The radiation is 40,000 times higher than normal levels, so anyone brave or dumb enough to go in needs to get in and out as quick as possible. Once you leave, you'll also be asked to a radiation test. This was the epicenter of the crisis. On that fateful day, a series of explosions destroyed the reactor and instantly killed 54 people. According to The Guardian, some of the plastic instrumentation switches were taken by souvenir hunters. Some diagrams of the reactor remain. <laughs> Radioactive puppies One of the most tragic aspects of Chernobyl was the many dogs who were abandoned and simply had to be left behind during the emergency. You were simply banned from taking your pets with you, as they could be carrying radiation. If you have ever seen the Chernobyl TV series, you'll know that squads were sent in to shoot the dogs for this very reason. However, not all of these dogs were killed, and the descendant of these dogs live here today in Chernobyl. In the absence of owners, they form their own community. But life ain't easy for these poor little pups. Ukraine is incredibly cold during the winter, and they can still carry radiation in their fur. As we mentioned earlier, animals living in this area might have growth problems and don't live as long. Sadly, these dogs don't live longer than six years. Unlike wild horses, these stray dogs find it difficult to live in the wilderness and rely on human support. But these dogs today aren't completely abandoned. Guards near the checkpoints have built shelters for them to stay during the winter. The Clean Futures Fund has set up three veterinary clinics, including one inside the Chernobyl nuclear plant. Most of the time, people find them cute, but some think they might be contaminated and so avoid touching them. When approaching these dogs, you're expected to exercise the same level of caution with any other stray dog, so no matter how cute, please keep a safe distance. <laughs> gas Mask Room We now return to the Pripyat Middle School and we'll be taking a look at the Gas Mask Room. 
Yeah, that's right, found inside this school is a room full of gas masks. As we mentioned earlier, the Soviet Union were enraged in a game of chess with the USA. The chances that the United States could drop a nuclear bomb on the country were unlikely, but something they definitely wanted to be prepared for. So in case of a nuclear attack, the children would need to be given these masks to survive. It's assumed that these gas masks were just thrown across the room like that and were stored properly. Sites from Chernobyl are regularly looted because of the historical value most of the objects have. You'd like to think that the gas masks were hidden away so they couldn't be scaring children. The cruel irony is that it was the nuclear power plant and the government's inability to deal with its explosion that destroyed this town. The Claw We now move on to what's considered by many to be the most dangerous object in the entire exclusion zone. It's known as the Claw of Death. This claw was hidden in the trees. Workers were unsure what to do with this piece of machinery, so they brought it out to the woods in the hopes that nobody would find it. And it's difficult to find, but a few guides on the tour know where it is. So what is the claw? Well, the claw is essentially the end of a crane machine. It was used in the aftermath of the disaster to help clean out radioactive graphite and material that came from the explosion. All of the dangerous radioactive material from the explosion was cleared out using this machine. As a result, this claw is still considered incredibly dangerous. As the Australian archaeologist Robert Maxwell explains, imagine someone trying to stand on a rooftop that was so radioactive that it could give you such acute radiation sickness that you basically cook yourself and die. So this claw was deeply involved in all the intensely radioactive material as it moved the material back into the core. To say the claw is highly radioactive and dangerous is not an exaggeration. <laughs> Chernobyl Canteen our next topic is something a bit more normal in every day, but having something completely normal in the content of a nuclear wasteland is pretty strange in itself. There are many first responders, scientists, and construction workers who work in the area, and there are not many places for them to grab a bite to eat. The only place you can eat nearby is the Chernobyl Canteen. It's one of the few, if not the only restaurant in the world where you enter through a radiation detector. The canteen serves a few Ukrainian dishes and looks like a regular canteen you'd find in any other part of the world. And outside the canteen, you'll find a lot of the dogs we mentioned earlier, hoping to get some food. The dogs are often given scraps by the workers, and it's a wonderful representation of humanity on the very site of the world's worst man-made disaster. A writer for the Atlas Obscure summed it up beautifully when she wrote, they're a reminder that even in places that have known tragedy, the best thing about humanity filling food and friendship with our animal compatriots prevail. Atomic Vodka We'll finish this list on a more positive note. In 2021, Chernobyl exported its first ever consumer product from the region and scientists really wanted to demonstrate that they could begin to grow crops and produce items from the land in the region. The product was vodka. Vodka can be quite a difficult drink to stomach, but what about Atomic Vodka? Atomic is a brand of vodka made from radioactive apples in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. But don't worry, you're not drinking radioactive waste, although when drinking vodka it can feel like that at times. The apples are apparently slightly radioactive, which means it's safe to drink. The deadly radiation is stripped away during the distillation process. This product could serve as the light at the end of the tunnel. After three decades, something grown on this land is safe to be consumed by other humans. On its website, it says, we believe that what these areas need most is economic development and management of the unique wildlife resource the abandoned areas represent. 75% of the profits from this vodka go to animal conservation or communities affected by the Chernobyl disaster. So you can drink vodka and make the world a better place at the same time.